Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Premiere Pro scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to create sequences, tracks, and clips, and a little bit on how to manage uh, how you create them and how to delete them and things like that. So this script we're going to be creating, you can download for free in the description in the GitHub link, and we're just going to be going over a whole bunch of useful things also using this uh, Premiere Script Editor extension, which we created at the beginning of the month. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can again check out the code for this and the extension in the GitHub below. You can either follow along or just take the snippets of code you find useful. And make sure you follow us there for coding updates. And also in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link for that in the description below. So I'm going to create a new script and just call this create stuff. That's going to be the name of our script. We're going to start off with the sequence stuff. How do we create a sequence, delete a sequence, and all that kind of stuff. So we need to first start with a project variable. So we'll say project is equal to app.project. And now I want to create a new sequence. So I'll create a variable called sequence. And the way we create a sequence is by saying project.create new sequence. And inside of here, we can provide it with a single parameter, a string for the name of our sequence. Let's just call this our new sequence. And this actually isn't working because we're not providing it with the second argument it requires, which is uh, the sequence ID. And because sequence IDs are usually complicated, uh, I thought originally that would be something complicated to get, but you can just generate your own custom ID like this, XYZ123, and we can provide that as our sequence ID. Now if we save it and run it, you can see now we're going to be prompted to create a new sequence. So this create new sequence will bring up that dialog to select a sequence preset. Um, and that may be something that you want to avoid. So there is another method we can use called create new sequence from clips. We provide it with a name, an array of project items, which we want to uh, basically convert to a sequence and a destination bin. So in order to do this, I'm going to say var maybe sequence two is equal to project dot create new sequence from clips. And again, we need the name here. So I'll just call this uh, my clips sequence. We need an array of project items. In this case, let's just go ahead and give it one app dot project dot root item dot children. And right now we'll grab children one. Actually, let's grab one, two, three, four, five, and six, which should be four and five. So that should provide us with these two pieces of these two clips, these two footages here. And we're going to put the destination bin as the root. If I save this and run it, it's going to ask us to create a bin. But then we can also create our clip sequence, which is now going to use our two chosen clips here. And as you can see, that particular line does not require us to have any prompt. It just creates the sequence from uh, whatever clips we end up giving it. Now, if you want to remove a sequence, this is quite easy as well. We'll just reference our project and say dot delete sequence. And we'll want to provide it with a sequence object. So if I give this sequence to, after it creates the sequence, it's actually going to just delete it. So this is theoretically not going to do anything. So that's how we can create a sequence from scratch or one from some already existing clips that were imported, as well as how to delete it. The last tip on sequences is how to get all the sequences in your project. So if I create a variable called sequences and I say project.sequences, and now let's go ahead and alert our sequences.length. And because we're in Premiere, all of our alerts need to be a string. So I'm going to convert this length to a string to see how many sequences we have in our project. And in this case, that turns out to be 14. 
So that's a way you can get all the sequences and then you can easily loop through just your sequence items. And if you have a ton of Premiere uh, clips, then this can make getting your sequences quick. Or if you just want to uh, quickly only get one type of item that's useful as well. Now the next thing I want to go over is a bit about tracks. We have our sequence which contains multiple video and audio tracks. And basically the way we import footage into our sequence involves the tracks. So this is a very important part of Premiere scripting. The tracks are inside of their own array, uh, which you can reference by saying dot video tracks, or you can say dot audio tracks. And this is referenced after a sequence. So I could say uh, sequence two, which is the sequence we're creating. And I'm just going to comment out this code, which deletes it and sequence two dot video tracks that will provide us with all three of these video tracks of our sequence. And of course, same with dot audio tracks, uh, attaching a sequence before it will provide us with that sequences audio tracks. The very first track of any of these starts at zero, just like a normal array. And the length of it will be the number of them minus one. The way we get the first uh, element of this is just like a normal array at index zero. So the first video track you can get by saying video tracks zero. Now let's go over how we can specifically add a clip from over here into, now let's look how we can add a project item from over here, say a piece of footage and add it to one of our tracks. So first we need to grab our sequence and a video track we want to add it to. Let's say in this case, because we already have something on video track one, or we will when we create this sequence, we'll grab video track two. And we'll use index one. And now there are two ways we can import a piece of footage or clip. The first way is by saying dot insert clip. And we need to provide it with two arguments. The first of which is the project item we want to uh, use. Now the way I'm gonna do that is by simply uh, reorganizing my project panel, and I'm gonna grab the first child here now. In this organization, the first uh, project item will give me this clip. So I'll say app.project.rootitem.children index zero. And then we need to provide it with a time object. I believe I have some tutorials already on creating a time object. It's its own specific object whose sub properties are seconds, the number of seconds at which it takes place and a special property called ticks, which I also have a few videos about. So I'm going to create a variable called time and set this equal to a new JavaScript time object. Um, again, this is specifically for Premiere. I'm going to set the time dot seconds equal to the, the seconds in the video track I want to insert it in. So let's say time dot seconds is two. I'll go ahead and save this and run it. As you can see now, we have on video track two, at second number two, a video being added that we selected from our project panel. So that's one way you can insert clips. And what this will do actually is it will insert a clip, but if there are clips before or after it, it will change the ordering and timing of those clips. So the better way to do this is one called overwrite clip. Instead of inserting, we're gonna overwrite. And actually, if I was to go ahead and comment out our sequence creation, and instead of sequence two, I'm gonna say app.project.active sequence. I'm gonna show you what happens when we take this current sequence and we try and insert a clip instead of overriding it. If I go ahead and run this, you can see now it's just moved it over to the right. It's inserted the clip but move to the other one as well. So what we want to do is say overwrite clip. And once we run that, it's going to simply overwrite the clip instead of inserting it. And that can be important for a lot of cases where you're inserting and adding a whole bunch of different things into your project. And those are the two ways you can sort of insert project items and create clips inside of your sequence. That's a super useful thing that is used in a lot of automation processes. Lastly, I wanna go over how you can uh, access and manage clips, which are the things that we are actually uh, having inside of our video or audio tracks. So first let's look at how we can loop through our clips. We need to grab a video track or an audio track in order to loop through the clips. I'm gonna say var c 
is equal to zero and C is less than our app.project.active sequence for now. Dot video tracks. What video tracks are we going to loop through our clips? Let's go ahead and do uh, this one here where we now have three videos. So that's going to be video track number one. And to get the number of clips, we're going to say dot clips. This returns a whole list of all of the clips. We're going to say dot length. Then we'll increment C. And now if I just go ahead and say alert the current clip C dot name, we should go ahead and loop through all of our clip names. So you can see we have one, two, three different clips in there. That's how we can loop through our clips, but what else can we do? I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some of the different things we can do to a clip. Um, note that some of these can cause issues. I haven't figured out exactly why, but sometimes if you want to change the start or end points of your clips inside of a video or audio track, sometimes this can cause your script to stop at that line of code. Um, even if you have an alert before and after, it will still just stop on the line of code. It will even execute the line of code if you want to change the end time to something different. Sometimes it will just completely stop. So one workaround for this is if you're trying to change maybe the endpoint of your clip here, instead of doing that, go into the project item that is represented here, reveal in project, and change the in and out points of that clip. But if you want to access the start and end times, you have clip.start, clip.endpoint, clip.outpoint, and clip.end. And these will all give you a time object. So you want to get the object from this and get dot seconds usually, or if you want to specifically to, you can get the dot ticks. Then just a couple of useful methods for clips. You have clip.getSpeed. This will tell you the sort of stretch value or how uh, small or large the clip is compared to normal. You can say clip.isAdjustmentLayer. This will give you information of if a clip is an adjustment layer like this. And that is super useful if you want to specifically look for a clip. And a lot of extensions now in Premiere are using workflows that use adjustment layers. You can check if the clip dot is selected, and this can be useful if you're looking to apply an effect to a specific clip. If you want the user of your program to select a clip to add some effects to or add animation to, this is a great way to detect that. And then finally, something like clip dot remove is very useful as well. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's all about sequences, tracks, and clips, how to create them, manage them, and do some other things. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the specific code from this tutorial, as well as the code for this Premiere Script Editor. Make sure you follow us there for coding updates. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.